Hi, this is Becky from More Than Borderline, and today I'm going to talk about how far down the scale of functioning should we let a person with mental illness go. The other day I was reading an interesting article by Dr. E. Fuller Torrey, who is a uh, well-known psychiatrist and proponent of involuntary commitment, and he was talking about deinstitutionalization under Reagan. Uh, in other words, how putting people out of the state hospital and into group homes or, or what have you was supposed to work and what its effects were. Well, it didn't work at all. In fact, a lot of the people who'd been released from the state hospital ended up either in jail or on the streets. And it's almost impossible to hospitalize someone with severe mental illness unless they're a danger to themselves or others. Tory cited a case where a person was observed eating his own fecal material and his public defender argued at the commitment hearing since he wasn't a danger to himself or others, he should be let go, and the judge agreed. What was legally right in that instance was not what was morally right. So how far should we down should we let someone go? What's the humane thing to do? And if we do change the rules modifying hospitalization, what processes should be in place to protect the rights of the patient? Indiana has a statute where you can be committed for being dangerous or gravely disabled. The problem is we've got 50 different states with 50 different rules. Indiana's definition of gravely disabled is, uh, well, not really that uh, good, but it works. Gravely disabled is where you can't provide food for yourself, or you are homeless, or something like that. You can't function in day-to-day -day life. And that statute, while it does criminalize poverty, does help prevent people from becoming deteriorating so far to the point where they absolutely no longer function. I think Indiana's statute is pretty good, even though it leaves a little to be desired. I mean, I still have tr trouble putting food on my table because uh, my food stamp benefits keep getting cut, but it kept me from deteriorating to the point where I was on the streets. And I really don't know what the solution is, I'll be honest and admit that. But I think we need to decide on a case-by-case -case basis with the simple question, what is the best for the person involved? What is the best for the patient? And hopefully what's best for the patient will also be what's best for society. Thank you.